program. We're so thankful that you've tuned in. We have started the newest lessons and the greatest revelation that God has given to man. This is a prescription for revival and it is teaching us how we can be born again by the Spirit of God. We must learn these truths because there are no organizations, there are no earthly religions. This is all a divine calling. It's all about Christ. I want you to understand that the true story in these lessons is in John 17, verse 3. This is life eternal, that ye may know me, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. With the prescription for revival, the only way you can know these truths is to be a child of God. So you must know that first. And this is what we are teaching in these lessons. I will be repeating and repeating because that's the only way you can know these deep truths. And they are the greatest joy of my life. I'm, I have always lived the abundant life. But to know these truths and to give them out to you is the greatest revelation that God has given me. And I have served him as a home missionary for almost 40 years. For all of you that know that, that I do this for you, for the glory of God and not for money. And this is the prescription for revival, is let a few Christians get thoroughly right with God. If this is not done, the rest will come to nothing. Now, we're seeing this in these last days. We must get right with God. So to be thoroughly right with God, you must know that you are a child of God, born again by the Holy Spirit. It is a divine conception or a heavenly birth. And this is a heavenly divine message. That's what this book is all about. So you must know the Holy Spirit is guiding you into all truths, and the Holy Spirit cannot work apart from this divine word. We must get back to the Bible. We must get under the blood. We must believe in the purity and holiness of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that today, he is our great high priest in heaven, praying night and day for us. Now remember, if you saw these lessons before, remember that Jesus Christ is the only way to get to heaven. There is no other way that anyone, we must learn about him. From Genesis to Revelation, this book is all about Christ. So you must know him. And then Christ today is the prophet that was promised in the Old Testament. The preparation for the truth that we are teaching. In the Old Testament, God makes ready 
for the coming Messiah. He only gave religion to one nation, that is the nation of Israel. And we'll find out more about all of these that ended at the cross. He fulfilled the whole law, and now we must worship Him, coming to the throne of grace in heaven with a true heart and full assurance of faith. There is no controversy with this book. Whatever God says, it's going to happen. I know that this is a true book. He has never failed me, and I have lived by faith, and I know that his word is pure as silver, tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. The only living book in the world so the manifestation now that we're finding, the preparation was for the Messiah's coming. They were looking for a Messiah, the Jews were in the Old Testament. And God now, the manifestation is in the four Gospels. Christ enters the world, dies for the world, and founds his church. We are the body of Christ and he is the head. And the appropriation in the book of Acts and the epistles, the ways are revealed which the Lord Jesus Christ was received, appropriated, and applied in individual lives. It is a personal gift. You must receive the gift of eternal life and forgiveness of sin. You must be believe in the blood. And the consummation of this in the book of Revelation, the outcome of God's perfect plan is revealed in the book of Revelation. These are the most exciting lessons in the world. There are two generations in the Bible. The generation of Adam, and notice in Genesis 5, and it says, and he died when he gave the generations of Adam. In Adam, all die. Every person that is born is born a sinner in Adam. Every person in the world is the same in God's sight. He loves us all the same. And then the generation of Christ in Matthew 1.1, the word death is not mentioned. So we see in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You have to be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly rejoice for the opportunity to come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank thee for this heavenly calling that thou hast called each of us. And we are thankful that we are coming into the holiest by the blood with full assurance of faith that whatsoever we ask according to thy will, according to thy word, thou will give it to us. So we're asking for 100 fold. We're asking for the eyes of every person to be opened, their heart right now to be opened. And this word is piercing their hearts as they were on the road to Emmaus when Christ was giving out the word of God. They said, did not our hearts burn within us when he expounded the word to us? Go before me right now, prepare every heart, our intellect, our emotions, and our will to receive this gift of eternal life. 
and we are rejoicing that we are seated together in heavenly places right now. And our great high priest is leading us in praise and worship. And we are, want to offer the sacrifice of praise to thee continually, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we are learning so much about these truths and the prescription for revival is let a few Christians get right with God, thoroughly right with God. And this was written by Dr. Torrey. And this was in the late 1800s or the early 1900s. And let us put ourselves at the disposal of God for his use as he sees fit in winning others to Christ. This is all. Now, let me tell you, this is the most important thing for you to understand. Getting right with God, even as true believers, is the most difficult thing today because Satan is trying to deceive the very elect. So if we do not obey him in these last days, everything that is happening will come to nothing. And we better be prepared to receive this gift and be ready and looking for the rapture. That's why we have this Christ in the clouds, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I won't get into all of these today, but as if you are using this prescription, now remember, this is on the internet, and my internet is gloriousmessage.com. That you are to read chapter 12 of Romans and chapter 13 of Romans every day. And chapter 12, 1 and 2, to present our bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is thy reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that we as true believers prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Now for service, this, you must get this outline in chapter 2, begins in verse 3 through 8. And then for Christians and those within the body of believers, we are one in Christ, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We're the body and he's the head. And it gives us how we are to live with one another in perfect love. From Romans chapter 12, verse 9 through 16. And for those that are without Christ, this is the Christian and those that do not know Christ, verse 17 through 21. This is the outline that you must read every day for us as true believers desiring to have a revival, seeing souls come to Christ every day. This is what we must do. Obey this book and chapter 12 and 13 of Romans. Now, 13 is the law of love toward our neighbor. And this is verse 8 in chapter 13. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, Love is the fulfilling of the law. It has to be done in love. Everything we do for Christ has to be done in love. So we can see getting right with God means not only being sure of our salvation as forgiven sinners, but being sure of our fellowship with God as friends and saints. It means never to retain a grudge against anyone for giving until 70 times 7. Now this is the beginning of this. So we gave you the heavenly divine message on being born again last week, the last two weeks. 
And now this, if you do not know these truths, in man's fall, unfallen state, the spirit of man was illumined from heaven. But when Adam sinned, sin closed the window of the spirit and pulled down the curtain on the spirit and it became a death chamber and remained so in every unregenerate heart until the life and light giving power of the Holy Spirit floods that chamber with the life and light giving power of the new life in Christ Jesus. This is a heavenly birth. And John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now we are truly children of light. And you see this in Romans chapter 13. Let us walk honestly as in this day, not in rioting and drunkenness, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now for us, the night is far spent, verse 12 of Romans 13. The day is at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. We are to be a shining light to all of those around us that are lost. So we see then the natural man cannot understand spiritual things. Now, this is revealed in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. God has revealed them to us by the Holy Spirit. But God hath revealed unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, saith the Spirit of God, which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. You cannot know this book apart from the Spirit of God, and the Spirit can't work apart from the Word. For now we have received not the Spirit of the world. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The world is enmity against God. But the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us of God. He freely gives us all things. And then, the revealed things are taught in words given by the Spirit. Verse 13 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the words with man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now the revealed things are spiritually discerned. In verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now you can never get to heaven without knowing Christ. You, um, unless you are born again, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we see in these lessons seven things that the new truth revealed by the Spirit of God in John 16, 13 through 14. Now you must understand that you cannot live this book apart from studying it every day. He says, now this was before Christ went back to heaven. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Now this is John chapter 16, verse 12, and now 13. Howbeit when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. 
and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Christ came to make known and glorify the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's how Christ is supposed to be manifested through us to the world. This is so important. And then he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and show these unto you. You've got to get in the book. He cannot understand them until his spiritual nature has been renewed, born again. In John 3, 3 and John 3, 7. What does he say to Nicodemus that was a religious man, but lost? Religious people are lost unless you know Christ. And then he said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God or you could not do the miracles that you do. Jesus knew his heart. He knows your heart. You can fool everyone around you but God, he knows every thought. And this is, verily, verily, he said, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then verse seven, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. So the Holy Spirit then comes and dwells in our bodies. But the spirit of the natural man is not only darkened, his will stands as a guard at the door and prevents the entrance of the Holy Spirit. And it is not until his will surrenders through the power of the sword of God, the word of God piercing your hearts right now, that the Holy Spirit can enter and take up his abode in the spirit of man. Now this is a heavenly divine message. So here we go to Second Peter. Second Peter 1, 4. This is the most important thing for you to write these scriptures down. That's why I have to repeat. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partaker of his divine nature. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. What does holy mean? It means I'm to be holy as he is holy. And then he says, partakers of his divine nature, what, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And this is what we're seeing in these lessons. A healthy soul and spirit need a healthy body. And if the body is given over to carnality and lust, as a child of God now, you have to be born again. The soul and spirit suffer and the whole man becomes spiritually sick. So you have already escaped that according to 2 Peter 1, 4. And then 2 Peter 1, 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, moral excellency. That's what that means. And then we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. That's 1 Peter 1.5. And then we see the battlefield of good and evil is in the soul of man. Now, if you didn't get these last week, you have to understand these truths. The Spirit of God, if you have not, the spiritual faculties are faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. You cannot even worship God. You cannot even pray to Him until you become a child of God. You have no hope. And then the gates of the soul are imagination, conscience, memory, reasons, and affections. And this is what we as true believers must know. 
And it is not until the Holy Spirit should take up his residence, it is not enough that he takes up his residence in us. But listen to this. In the spirit of a man, he must have access to the soul and body. Not until then can a man become dedicated for consecration. That's what Romans 12, 1 and 2 mean. Is conditioned on a spirit feel, spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 And the God of all peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray my body, soul, and spirit will be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you how serious this is. You think about the people that have hurt you. You think as a teenager, as a girl or boy rejects you. Somebody rejects you, your mom and dad. Children rejected by their parents. What about Christ? That has given us everything Think of what happens to his heart when you reject the gift of his divine love. And to think of the hurt he has when we sin against him. And the Spirit of God is grieved. It, we, I mean, this is the most serious thing in life. I cannot understand why we fail someone that loves us with an everlasting love. When Adam sinned against God, he lost the spiritual faculties and became dead spiritually to God and his spirit. This brought death upon the body and the soul. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. But remember, it is the blood that makes an atonement for our sin. When man sinned and failed and broke fellowship with God, this image of the Almighty was destroyed and he ceased to be a trinity. Now listen at this. I want you to listen. Man lost his perfection in every realm. And until he is willing to become alive to Christ and his spirit, he shall abide eternally in death. And the lake of fire is his home.